of his faithfulness. Amen. Amen. It is the wonders of God. This is the amazement of God. The things he does is past finding. Amen. Amen. And as I look through, as I look through the journey, how far God has brought me, there's one thing that I just want to do is to give him all the praise. Amen. Does somebody agree with me here? Yes. Do I have witnesses here? Now when you look through your life and see how far God has brought you, it is God that you want to give him all the praise. Amen. Amen. And I'm always amazed. Amen. As I was standing there, this word dropped in my spirit. And I believe that it is a word for somebody. Amen. Amen. He said, let my acts, as in my wonders, the things I do, become a revelation of my ways to you. Amen. And when, when you get some, you always want to get a scripture. Amen. <laughs> you must find a scripture more often than not. And I just remembered Psalm 103 verse 7. The Bible said what? That unto Moses he showed his ways, but unto the Israelites his acts. Amen. And that was the difference between the two. And that is why from time to time they forgot about the things God has done. Because his act had not become a revelation to them about the ways of God. Amen. And therefore we must be conscious of the fact that as we journey through life and God's acts are performed in our lives and around us, it should become to us that is the nature of God. That is the ways of God. Amen. And you are continuously amazed at his ways. Amen. I want us to just worship with the songs and just recognize God for his faithfulness. Amen. And the things that he continue to do. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But say, Father, yes, I stand amazed. Yes, in your presence. Yes, oh Lord. And the things that you do, yes, they are past finding. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
Yes, Lord. Wherever you are, you just want to begin to bless the name of the living God. Just thank God that He is a God who does amazing things in this presence. Yes, oh Lord. You can't be sure that a day is more than able, yes, oh Lord, to come through for you in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, oh Lord. We stand amazed. Your presence, yes, O Lord, we stand amazed. Yes, O Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, O Lord. Oh, we bless your holy name. We glorify your holy name. We say you alone be praised. We say you alone be exalted in this place. We say you alone, Father, be lifted on high in the name of Jesus. Oh, we magnify your name for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, you can kindly take your seats. Let's appreciate the choir. Let's appreciate the instrumentalists. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, O oh Lord, we give God praise. Thank you. Father, we bless you. We worship you. We recognize you for who you are. We ask you to take control and take charge in the name of Jesus. Let every word that go for Father, yes, O Lord, be a blessing. Let a word that go for Father, yes, O Lord, empower and turn lives around in the name of Jesus. Let there be answers, let there be solutions, let there be breakthrough as your word goes for this morning in the name of Jesus. Indeed, we stand amazed in your presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 You have, to, you have to be amazed. Amen. Anytime you go into the presence of a living God, because he's the one who will do things that will amaze you. Amen. Uh, and, and as I was talking about the ways of God, sometimes all you need to do is to be in the right place. Amen. And you know where the right place is. And that place is to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is nothing that is beyond him. Amen. To do. Amen. A couple of things that I believe uh, uh, that I want to share uh, before coming as I was preparing. He says, in every service where my name is lifted, I am there to be good. Amen. I'm there to be good. And I said, what do you mean to be good? Amen. And he said, to give gift, to deliver, to set captives free, to empower the weak, to give wisdom, ideas, to heal. Amen. And that is what he does. Amen. The Bible says in Job 5, 9, Amen. We, 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 we believe God. Amen. He said what? Who does great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. Amen. That is the God that we serve. Amen. And that is why we, we must always be in that place of what? Of expectation in his presence. Amen. Because the things that he, he will do will amaze you. Amen. I had a testimony about a woman who has been born blind for 23 years. Amen. 23 years, never seen the husband before, never seen the children before, and goes into a service, and prayer is lifted like this atmosphere, there's worship, nobody touches her, but suddenly those eyes open, amen, those eyes open, and for 23 years, amen, for 23 years, she was able to what, to see what, the husband and children, amen, and that is what the presence of God can do, amen, amen, there's so many amazing things, amen, that when we come into the presence of God, we must be what excited about. And when we hear some of these testimonies, is to tell us that God can also do it in your life, amen, amen, God can also do it in your life, amen. This morning, I want to touch on, I've been having, um, I prepared, and then I had something else for this morning, so you will believe God, and then we'll, 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 we'll go through, amen. We want to hear what God has for us. Maybe it's for one person. Maybe it's for everybody. Maybe there is something, amen, for somebody in this morning sermon, amen. Um, I, I want to talk to us about praying without season, amen. Praying without season, amen. That's scripture, amen. That is a scripture, amen. Scripture, praying without season, I was going to talk about the power of margins, but amen. We believe God. Praying without season, which is the, the hard desire of God. Now, before I say anything about this, and I think it's connected 
to, to the things I'm sharing this morning. And that's, if God puts something in the Bible, yeah, praying without season is a scripture. Amen. First Thessalonians 5, verse 17, where Paul, who had come through thick and thin, has realized that it is important, it is key, that as believers, we pray without season. Amen. It is a very big ask. Amen. I don't know how many of us have gone through or thought about the scripture. Amen. And asking ourselves whether it is possible to do so. Amen. Whether it is possible to do so. Because we know that the output or the experience of a believer is linked toward his prayer life. Amen. There is a very strong link. Amen. And the more you are consistent, the more you stay in a place of prayer, the more your life manifests Christ. Amen. The more you become what an output of what God has called us to do. Amen. Which means that one of the key things about praying without season is abiding in his presence. Amen. Is abiding in his presence. And when we talk about abiding in his presence, I'm not saying that you are praying 24-7 or you are in some sense, you, you are in a church 24-7. Amen. There are people who, whose calling is, is that. Amen. That is what they've been called to do. Amen. Uh, uh, they stay in a place of prayer. We, 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 we know Anna in the Bible where it is said that she fasted day and night in the temple awaiting the manifestation of Jesus. Amen. She stayed long in the place of prayer. Amen. She persisted long in the place of prayer. There is a place for that. Amen. But there are other bits that come with it. Amen. The other things that come with it, being long in a place of prayer is awesome. But it's also the, 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 the allowing your environment to always be what Christ like. Amen. Creating an environment or being an environment where what the, the, the presence of God comes forth. Amen. Because it will make a difference in your life. Amen. I'm saying this not by virtue of only what God, I believe, has said to me to say to you, but by virtue of experience that I've had with God. If you can stay around God, stay in the presence of God or in the things of God, when you read in that scripture in John 15 where it talks about, I believe, verse 7, it said, abide in my presence. If you abide in the presence, it goes on to say that then whatsoever you would ask, then you would have it. Amen. He said, if you live in me, abide vitally united to me, and my word then remains in you and continue to live in your heart, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. Amen. Ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. Amen. There is a place, there is a huge benefit, there is a huge advantage when we do what? We abide in him and stay in the presence of God. How do we do that? Several ways. One of the ways is being in a service. Amen. You are in an environment with God. Amen. Several ways to do that. Engaging in the things of God. Not only in the place of prayer. It talks about the fact that staying in the word of God. Amen. Will bring you to that place where you abide in his presence. Amen. Then out of that, what you would ask, he would give unto you. Amen. And he would do what? He would amaze you. Jeremiah 33, verse 3, he said, call unto me and, and do what I will answer you. And I'll do great, I'll do mighty things that you have not even what imagined. Amen. Ephesians 3, we know it talks about 20, 22 there. It talks about the fact that what, that God, will, he says what, he will respond beyond and above that which in what you have asked. Amen. So now to him who is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that what we ask or think according to the power that is at work on us, in us. Amen. There is a bit that we'll, we'll talk about later. But the point here is the fact that what? When we, we, we practice or we engage or we abide consistently in that presence of God, then scriptures like praying without season become a possibility. Amen. Then revelations like this in terms of breakthroughs like this in terms of asking and having become what? A revelation, amen. Become our experience, become our testimony, amen. 
So you stay in the presence of God. Amen. And it takes a determined purpose. It takes an intentional effort to abide in the presence of God. It is not automatic. Amen. You have to be intentional about it. Amen. You have to be intentional about it because in today's world, there are many, many things that are demanding for our time. Do we agree? Amen. The students, the books, the study, to study, to go to the lab and do the things you have to do for workers, to do other things in terms of work, prep for work and do all these other things are pressing for our time. But how do we abide in the presence of God? I want to tell you this morning that make that choice. Amen. I was saying in, 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 in John 30, he said, I, 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 I have put before you life and death. Choose life. Amen. I put before you the option to choose to abide in the presence of a living God and I encourage you to choose that. Amen. That as you live here, you make a determined purpose that I'm going to make, do everything possible to abide in his presence. Amen. In my room, in the things that I'm involved in. Amen. And I'm saying this because over the years I've seen how God has been God. Amen. And I believe that it connects to making the intentional effort to abide in his presence. Amen. And the structures that have been made available for you to abide in his presence, you want to take advantage of these. Amen. That are provided. And Pastor T, at the beginning, for those of us who were not here, was sharing along the lines of uh, being engaging with the different things that are set up in church. Amen. And, and it takes, it takes sacrifice. Amen. To say that I'll wake up at five on Monday morning to join prayer. How many of us agree? Holy Ghost people, you just wake up. Amen. You are always in tune with the Spirit of God. It takes sacrifice. Amen. I have to count everybody. Anybody those who didn't raise their hands and I'll check whether tomorrow at five you'll be there. Amen. <laughs> it takes sacrifice. Amen. It takes, it takes sacrifice. And Pastor will say the wisest thing you can do is to sleep early and set an alarm <laughs> so you can wake up. Amen. But it's a sacrifice. It means that if you're going to sleep early, for some of us who have to do some other things before we go to bed, you need to do a lot of things, then to sleep early then becomes a very expensive sacrifice to make. Amen. Then you think about the many other things you have to do to read your word, to even make time to come in here. Now I believe that that also is a sacrifice. The weather is beautiful now, so it's okay. But when we get into December and the winter and the things that we have to wake up early, Amen. Then to come into the presence of God in itself, in terms of church, is a sacrifice. Amen. You must be determined to do so. But what I want to say to you is that it's out of the, 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 the offshoot of abiding in the presence of God that you will see the amazement of God. Amen. You will see the things that God will bring your way that would beat your imagination. Amen. Because seed sown, God never forgets. Amen. The time you are sitting here, it's a seed you are sowing. Amen. Because there are many other things that you could have been doing. Amen. Economics is an opportunity cost. Very, very expensive ones. Many other things you could have been doing. But you are here. Amen. You are making plans to stay in the presence of God. And of course, as, as I'm ministering this word, I want to believe that God is taking you in terms of your mind around ways in which you can begin to what, remain in that presence. Amen. Because it is a key for making sure that you pray without season. Amen. You pray without season. Amen. You know, when we, 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 we talk about some of these things, you begin to wonder, how am I going to make it in the things that I have to do. I'll share a couple of things. Especially for us who have come in, students who have just come in and, and, and studying, amen, and wondering how we're going to make it, amen, with, with what I'm even saying here. 
But even let alone just being able to commune with God. Somebody says the environment in, in countries like this, the spiritual environment in countries like this is very, 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 very low. Amen. Uh, in some part of the world, by now you hear 15 churches playing around. You can hear, whilst uh, uh, I'm preaching now, you can hear a nice music happening elsewhere. <laughs> Amen. Which is worship going on. Amen. But in this environment, these things are not very common. Amen. It takes a commitment. Amen. A sacrifice to abide in the presence of God. Amen. And I want to share a few things with, with us. Amen. When, when, when you reflect on some of these things, then to, to abide in the presence of God becomes something you yearn or you press in for because you have seen the, the benefit. Amen. You have seen the blessing that come out of it. Amen. And I want to share a few things, a couple of flashbacks, for, especially for those who have just come in. And, and, and I came to study in 2007. Long time, eh? It's not too long, amen. But 2007, I was here to study. Um, MSc Economics in and Financial Economics. Amen. And it, it, it was an amazing journey for me. And, and for some of you, I know you are all very smart and uh, intelligent and all that. But somebody says that when you are in your local atmosphere and you are the champion, when you go elsewhere, you then meet other champions. And then you realize that no, <laughs> there are champions in champions. Amen. <laughs> so so we, we, we've all come from different places. And, we're, and, and we've, we've come to meet different people. But some of those times when you go into, into lectures, you see people responding to things that have been said. Say, hey, are we, were we, or did we have the same qualification to come in, uh, onto this program? Oh, mine was a bit different. Hey, content I've been delivered. I'm wondering, really? This is part of the subject I chose to come and study. Or I'm in the wrong room. <laughs> I have to check my timetable and make sure. Am I in the right room? <laughs> and it's the right room. Amen. But in the midst of all that, we've come knowing certain things for us as Christians. That I must, like I'm saying this morning, abide in his presence. I must make time in the midst of all that to pray. I must make time in the midst of all that to get into the word of God. I must make time in the midst of all that to fellowship with the brethren. Whilst I'm seeing stars for the fundamental purpose that I came here, what do I do? It's a choice, isn't it? And that's what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about the sacrifice that you have to make, and I'm saying this morning that you have an option. Amen. And I want to force you to choose the option to abide. Amen. If I had my own way. Because what you can do in your own strength is nothing compared to what God can do through you. Amen. What you can do in your own strength is nothing compared to what God can do through you. Amen. And I'm saying here that the secret is abiding in the presence of God. Because in the midst of all the stars that I was seeing, I made a choice. And that choice is what I present to you. To come to the place where you are praying without seeing, like the Bible says, it's to abide in the presence of God and it's to remain in that place. And that choice for you this morning, and I'm sharing that choice with you, is to make a decision not to let replace God. Amen. With all the things that are going on. Because he's the one who would do those things for you. Amen. And I keep saying this because I know. This morning I went into my archives. Somebody says that a few of the old people I had the testimony before. I say it's my testimony. Amen. But I went into my archives and I brought out a letter. Amen. I came in September and that's how I keep looking at my phone to share with you. And I crave your indulgence to share this with you. 
Amen. He came and this is a, a letter dated 13th of February, I believe, 2008. 13th of February. Now, we came in September 2007. First semester, you finish your exams in January as teachers and lecturers. There's always pressure. Make sure you mark quickly and get the results ready. Amen. So, for most of us here who are students, you will see your results come February 2024. Amen. Uh, whether you like it or not. Amen. But the things we do in all those processes. Amen. Look, everybody have their belief system. Those people in the world, they have their belief system. You as a Christian, have your belief system. Don't compromise your belief system because you don't know what the other person is operating with and try to operate in that system. You begin to struggle. We went January exams. There are some of the exams I've shared here that after Usually the exam is very long, three hours. After two hours, I realized I completely missed a question. <laughs> Amen. I said, hey, God, my option, my option is because I came here and I found a place and connected with God and stayed with God and committed to God and did all the things that God desires of us if we want to abide with him. I had learned that in the midst of crisis I can call on Jehovah God. I have learned that in the midst of crisis I can call on Jesus. Amen. I know that in the midst of crisis I can call on God who can make a way where there seems to be no way. The same God who part the Red Sea and allowed the Israelites to go through. That same God can part that sea that I was facing at that moment. Amen. Now remember, if you are familiar with that scripture, Moses was crying. He had turned to, <laughs> to God. And that is how desperate some seasons will be for some of us. Amen. That's how it might be. But I'm here to say that when you abide with God, said that which what you will ask it shall be done for you I prayed, I said God this one only you, help me help me and I manage within 30 minutes to complete a full question, amen and at the end of everything next time I'll bring the grades and I'll share with you, but on the 13th of February I got this letter. And when you finish, if you want to see it, I'll show it to you. Okay, I brought it. I brought evidence. And this is it. It said, the internal examiners have now considered the master's marks for semester one. They were particularly impressed with your overall performance in the examination and ask that I congratulate you on their behalf. I've told you that in the exams, I missed the question. I've told you when I went into the lectures, there were stars. I was wondering whether I was in the right place. I've said, and I believe that if you don't relate, maybe a few days you relate on some of these things. But what I'm saying to you is that there is a choice. I chose to abide. In the midst of all that, not ignoring the fact that I have to study. When I abide, I'm asking God for wisdom on how to study. I'm asking God on wisdom on what to study. I'm asking God on how to do it. Amen. Because I've gone through being a student and currently an examiner of modules and courses. And I can understand that for every exam paper, there are key things you are looking for. So if you can produce those key things, we'll give you the marks. Simple as that. So if I am to tap from God, who is, who is all wisdom, who is all knowing, then I can come 
to a place where I will write by his inspiration and cause men to be amazed by it. What I'm saying is that the secret is what to what to abide in God. I'll continue reading the letter. He said, the school is proud of all its master students and particularly keen to encourage excellence among the most talented. Christians here, fellow Christians, he says, giving your marks this semester, there is every possibility that you with continued, there is every possibility that with continued application, a distinction for your degree is within what? your group. The world is calling forth for me. Amen. Calling forth for me. Amen. I'll say something very soon. He said, I will also encourage you to think seriously about continuing as a research student in Nottingham University. He said, there are scholarships available and if you would like to consider, please discuss with so, 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 so. Brethren, Brothers and sisters, this began a journey that has brought me this far. But there was one thing that I'm sure of, and that thing is I chose God in the midst of all that was going on. Those moments in the room alone, those who in your own room, in the night we wake up and you're reading the thing and say, hey God, how do I understand this? I've gone through that as well. But then I chose to abide. And God did amazing things. Amen. And it's that same God that you serve. Amen. And I went on. Indeed, as they said, scholarships, options were more than I could choose. Did a PhD. And by God's grace, I graduated with a PhD. And the master's, like he said, distinction, I completed with a distinction. I'm not, let's appreciate God, not me. Let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. It's the work of God. Amen. Like I say, he's no respecter of persons, but unto him who will believe would be your experience, would be your portion. But I'm saying to us this morning is that when the Bible says pray without ceasing, calling us to continually be in the presence. The secret is to choose to abide in the presence of God. And how do I abide in the presence of God? Is by committing to the things that are available to me. And one of them is service. One of them is prayer. One of them is getting to the word of God. Because when you surround yourself consistently in the midst of all this, what you do is that what you get a place with God. Amen. Like Abraham. Abraham, the Bible says what? Became what? A friend of what? Of God. Amen. And began to do amazing things. Because when you come to that place to become somebody's friend, those who have friends here, you communicate, isn't it? You call each other, you talk, you are always in tune, you are always creating an environment. And what I was then saying is that how do I then be abide in the presence of God consistently when I'm even at work, when I'm even in meetings, when I'm even in lectures? Is that continuously asking for God's grace? I'm in meetings and I'm praying. It's not that I've called a prayer meeting. I'm saying, God, give me wisdom. Where I'm leading, to lead the people in the right direction. To contribute in the right way. In the same way, in your lectures, you're asking God, give me understanding. Give me insight. When you are studying, you said, God, help me to understand that particular theme. Because sometimes some of these things is just understand a particular theme and everything else will come easy. He takes the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Because in that way, all the glory will go to him. So nobody will stand and boast that it was by my own might. But Jehovah God, he did it. And that Jehovah God can do for you. Amen. He said, George Muller, the, 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 the man of old prayer, he said, the way to obtain a spirit of prayer so that you are praying without ceasing is to continue praying. Amen. The less we pray, the less we desire to pray. 
So if you start your journey and you, you avoid God, one day, you avoid God two days, three days, gradually your, you be, your senses become numb. And then it becomes okay. And then that is it. But you are entering into a system that you know nothing about. You have left your comfort zone into a zone that you have less knowledge about. I'm saying to us that as Christians, our system of operation is to abide with God. Amen. Abide in that presence of God. Amen. And that is our calling. There are several instances. We see Luke 18 verse 1. Let me read some scripture. I've read a couple of scriptures. Isn't it? Yeah. He said, And he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. When he says not to faint, it means that there are times when you can feel like what? Giving up. Amen. When the Bible says not to lose heart, there are times like that. Amen. But he calls us what? To press in. Amen. And how do I do that in those moments? That's why when we talk about praying without season, it's not just you praying 24-7. It's coming into a place when you are down in those moments. It is an opportunity to join online prayer. It's an opportunity to join dawn prayer. In that space, you are abiding in his presence whilst you feel like what? Losing heart or fainting. You are coming into that space where somebody would encourage you. Amen. That is why when we talk about prayer, there is prayer of partnership. Where others are able to what? To hold you high. We know in the Bible, when the Israelites were battling Joshua on the field, Moses was up there praying. And the Bible said, when his hands come down, then they are losing the battle. But thank God for Aaron and Hen. They were there to do what? To hold his hand high. And he pressed in. He pressed in. And there was victory. So pray without season. It's not saying that you should always be praying in your room. It's an opportunity to engage in other forms of praying. Amen. There is consistency. Amen. So I've said here, there is power in margins. Amen. One of the key concepts or threshold concepts in economics is marginal concepts, which is adding little to the total and gradually everything becomes bigger. So we look at things from the perspective of the margins. It's a very powerful concept. But how, what has it got to do with prayer? It is, it, is, it is a place where the long prayer is good, but also those moments of prayer is also great. Those one second of prayer also adds to the total. Amen. Those three minutes of prayer also adds to it. Those five minutes of prayer also adds to it. What am I talking about? What are those instances? Those instances where I'm, I'm about to enter into a, a, a certain event and make those 10 seconds prayer. Amen. When, when I'm about to go into one thing or engage with those other things, we make those prayers. We, we, we were taught to pray where we are about to eat. It is learning to pray without season. Those moments, those moments of prayer make a difference. Amen. It makes a difference and it can turn lives around. Amen. I'm looking for testing. Amen. And we see several instances. We've seen long prayer. We've seen the, the, the thief on the cross. <laughs> I'm not sure the kind of prayer he prayed, but his prayer was very, very simple. And that prayer took him to what? To heaven. Amen. So I'm saying that when you, are, when you feel you are losing out or you are losing grounds, those moments of prayer also count. So when you slept and you just realized that it's, um, it's um, 5.50, still join 10 minutes of prayer. Amen. It makes a difference. Amen. Those little moments, those little additions, they add to the total and makes a difference. Like the Bible says in Revelations, it said, it's the prayer of the saints. As the, the saints were praying, they were filling the vows. And when the vows was full, it toppled over and it came onto earth as manifestations of answers to prayer in thunder and lightning and explosions. What if that 
10 minutes is topping up to topple over? What if that one minute is, to, is topping up to topple over? That is praying without season. Mental, mental praying, amen. So looking at praying in, in, in the mind. Sometimes it's not just about vocal, amen. We read the story of Hannah in First Samuel. And Hannah was so, so much in, 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 in that place because she's not able to bear forth. She's not able to give that seed or give birth. She had gone to a pressing and she, she was in that place and she was feeling, thinking maybe she should be screaming. Maybe she's done that in the past when she goes to Shallow. But she came to the place where she was just what? Just, just pressing in bit by bit. Amen. Just doing that little. And she, her lips were just quiet. What I'm saying is that in the places where you feel like you cannot uh, audibly pray, there is a place to also pray from the heart. Amen. That also adds up to what? Praying what? Without what? Season. Amen. And that is how heaven can engage in the affairs of men. Amen. When they are in those places and those silent prayers are lifted up. Amen. So it's a, a, the, the testimony of a man who had MS, multiple sclerosis, and had gone into a service. So it was in wheelchair and ministration going on. Amen. And he, 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 he latched onto the word. And as he sat there, he said consistent, he was saying to himself in a prayer unto God, that I've heard your word, that your anointing is able to heal. Amen. And that was what he was saying in his, in his mind. I'm saying that there is a place where even as I'm ministering now, people are what are praying. Amen. There's a place even when I'm, 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 I'm talking now, there's a room where you can still what? Be ministering. Amen. And that can make a difference. Amen. That can minister. Amen. In times of trouble, Hezekiah turned his face and began to pray. Amen. There's a place for what? Prayer. Thanking God. And sometimes you don't need to utter any form of prayer. Praying without season. Worship. Creating a worship environment. Worship environment. Singing. Praise and worship. Equally has a place. Amen. Equally has a place for what? To minister. Amen. Said, praising God in Acts 16, we know what happened. Paul and Silas in that place, they could have been praying in tongues, and praying where they chose to praise and worship. Worship. Amen. So as you worship, you are praying without season. Amen. So it's not only in that place of verbally saying something, because as you worship, you take those words, they become meditations in your heart and you are speaking to God. Do we agree? The people agree. Amen. And sometimes, several testimonies where people have just worshipped and then they've got their breakthrough. They didn't even pray any form of prayer. Amen. They just worshipped. I had a story about a man who was in a wheelchair and being ministered to. And the prayer team, they had prayed for almost three hours. Prayed for almost three hours. There was no breakthrough. And suddenly they began to pray in the spirit. And then they had a direction to just worship. And as they began to sing and just minister around this person, suddenly the man got out of the wheelchair and was made whole. Amen. So there is power in that place as well. Amen. So when we talk about what praying without season, it feeds into what all these what diverse aspects. But I'm saying that the secret for that to provoke from your heart is when you develop what a lifestyle where you abide in God. Amen. Then you know that what that is what the place to go to. You suddenly provoke either worship, a prayer, thanksgiving. It just flows. Amen. Is someone being blessed? We give God praise. Amen. I want to share something briefly. Amen. Exploring fully, amen, those margins in terms of prayer. Exploring fully those margins in terms of prayer. And one of the things is paying key attention as you pray. Those three minutes, three seconds prayer make a big difference. It's important to pay attention to the promptings that God gives you. 
Amen. Those promptings don't only, God doesn't only prompt you when you pray for 30 minutes or one hour. In a three minutes prayer, in a one second prayer, <laughs> because to some extent, it, 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 it's more, it could be more direct. It could rather strike the mark. Amen. It could be, uh, we call it bull's eye here. Because it is a prompting that has come from God. And more, more often than not, they are very precise. They hit the mark. Amen. And heeding to those promptings can make a difference. Amen. It can save you a lot of journey. Let me share something with you. And then I'll, I'll, I'll go on break. Amen. I'll take a break. Amen. First Samuel 16. First Samuel 16. I'll share this with us. A couple of things to pray and uh, to share. There's one thing I, I'll share, share this before I then share this. And, and sometimes, sometimes we come to a place where we've prayed so much for ourselves that maybe we've, we've exhausted all the prayer. You can pray for somebody else. Amen. And that's also important. Amen. And when you read in the Bible about um, Abraham, interceding for Sodom and, and, and Gomorrah. And, and, and you can think about it. Lot was not fair to, to, to Abraham. <laughs> Yet, he interceded. But the key thing was the fact that God said, that how can I do this without not telling my friend? Without not telling what Abraham. And that is you. When you abide so much, that is that you become a channel through which what God will use you to minister. Amen. When God came to, to, to say to, to Abraham that I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, the key thing there was the fact that Abraham came into or in between to intercede. Amen. What I'm saying is the fact that when as the body of Christ, we hear things about the world, about people in, in our lives or even in the ministry. There is a place for us to do what? Intercede. Amen. Come in between and begin to do what? To pray. Amen. It's not a place to begin to what? To be joyful about the woes of others. And that is how you can also pray without season. Amen. Because in that space, you are hearing about what is going on, but immediately you are in a place of what? Of prayer. Amen. You are, a, you are in a place of what? already what interceding on behalf of that person amen so which means what you do not have an excuse to say that i prayed all my prayers amen there is a lot of other things you can pray about amen so you can still pray without season first samuel 16 verse we pay attention to the promptings of god and it's, it's amazing thus he said now the lord said to samuel how long would you mourn for saul seeing that i rejected him from reigning over israel this is where Saul is not being, a, he hasn't been patient, he's lost it. And it, God instructs Samuel, he says, fill your horn with oil and go. He said, I'm sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among, a king among his sons. Amen. That's two. He said, Samuel said, how can I go? You come to those places where you, 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 you begin to ask God in things concerning your life, things that are happening, things that you, you, you ought to do. Amen. And, and this is Samuel. And we know what God said about Samuel. He said that, that <laughs> there was no point where the word of Samuel fell. The prophetic word of Samuel was spot on. Amen. But you think about this interaction as, as a friendship interaction. Amen. Those promptings, those usual days where you are doing your things and God just ministering to you, you interacting with God and paying attention. He said, if Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, take a, a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. There was a solution. Amen. God gave him a solution. So there is a place to pay attention. Amen. To the promptings that come. He said, then invite Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one I name to you. Please, verse 3. Very, very important. It is important to pay attention. Which means be very, very attentive when God from his, his ministry. 
Because we've read this so many times that I heard this. I, I, I was just amazed by the fact that here was Samuel's answer. God said to Samuel that I will show you what you will do. And I will actually tell you who you should anoint as what? As king. Go down. When we read the story, what did Samuel do when he got there? Bible scholars. So Samuel did that, the Lord said. Samuel didn't do fully. Not fully. He said, and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, do you come peaceably? That's fine. And he said, peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourself and come with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to sacrifice. Verse 6. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord anointed is before me. Then what did God tell Samuel to do? I will show you and I will tell you who you should anoint as king. The event got the best of Samuel. When he got there, he looked and then he picked, but failed to go back and listen to what God has said to him. So, those moments or seasons in between going and coming and God prompting, we must cultivate the habit to listen and listen fully. Paying attention. Amen. Because sometimes the lack of answer to prayer is not because God doesn't want to answer Sometimes because we haven't paid attention fully. Amen. Especially in those moments, those little promptings, those five minutes, two minutes of prayer where there is an immediate response. We sometimes more often than not do not run with those. Because it's just a moment and then we just go. But God might be prompting, God might be speaking, God might be saying to you, but that is crucial. And someone went on and on and on until God then pointed to him who we are called. So, today, our calling is to abide. Because we abide in that presence, we will come to the place where we can fulfill 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. Pray without season. Amen. Has somebody been blessed? Have you been blessed? We want to begin to bless the name of our living God, wherever you are. Let's just begin to worship him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise. Ushers, can we have the communion? Let's begin to bless the name of a living God. Say, so, Father, grant me the grace to abide in your presence. Grant me the grace to abide. Grant me the grace to abide. Grant me the grace to abide in the name of Jesus. Let that be your prayer. Father, that I will abide, I'll remain. Yes, O Lord. Abide in your presence. Yes, O Lord. Yes, and come to the place. Yes, O Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, O Lord. Thank you. Father, we give you praise. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory. Yes, O Lord. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you, faithful God. Father, yes, O Lord. Grant us the grace. Grant us the grace. Grant us the grace. Grant us the grace. Yes, O Lord. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, O Lord. We give you all the glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, O Lord. Thank you, faithful God. Thank you, faithful God. Thank you, faithful God. Yes, O Lord. Thank you, faithful God. Ah, yes, O Lord. We give you all the honor. Yes, O Lord. We give you all the glory. Ah, yes, O Lord. We magnify your name. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Father. Yes, O Lord, that we are living here. Yes, O Lord, ah, with the grace to abide. Yes, O Lord, to remain. Yes, O Lord, to be grounded. Yes, O Lord, in you, in the name of Jesus, that we come to the place where we are praying um, without season, in the name of Jesus, where we fulfill that word um, that we have heard, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible said the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. He said, eat thus, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup of blessing. He gave thanks. He said, this is my blood. He said, drink this.